gathered. Welcome. Celebrated. Restored. Gathered together. Encouraged. Supported. Loved. Reminded who God is. Hearts awed by his majesty. Eyes seeing fresh. The wonder of grace. Thankful for his awesome, unwavering love. Reminded who I am. And all I have received. Challenged. Equipped. Renewed. Commissioned. Ready. Sent. loving, warm welcome to every single one of you. I'm just so conscious of God's beautiful presence here and uh, a warm welcome to everyone online. I wanna honor just a few people before I share the word this morning and then we're gonna partake around the Lord's table, something special and something Jesus has asked us to do. And I wanna honor my dearest mother. Uh, her, it's a birthday today. Uh, can we just give her a big, big hand? I can't see her right now, but she's somewhere in, in the building. And just wanna, where is she? At the back. There we go. Just wanna say love you, mom. Happy birthday. Uh, she turned 71 today. And uh, uh, a real rock in all our lives. And uh, one of the founding pastors here at New Life Church uh, from 1986 and has served this house in just so many precious ways, in small ways and big ways. And uh, we love you, we see your heart for the Lord, uh, for people. Uh, when you go to a house, uh, there's just photos of people all over the show. In fact, there's just no space to just put anything on the side tables, there's just photos. And uh, she, uh, she models uh, what love's all about and uh, it's a real privilege to have you as my mom and for, you to have, and for New Life Church to have you in this house. Also, two other special ladies, my darling daughter. Uh, she had a, a virtual graduation. It was quite a weird thing uh, to go to Tux University and uh, for her to be awarded her degree, a certificate. She just achieved her honors in uh, psychology and so super proud of Kayla Lee. She's helping in the youth ministry right now and, uh, but just super proud of our precious daughter. And then also my beloved wife, uh, on Tuesday, 27th of April, uh, Lee celebrated her birthday. So it's been a, a real week of celebration. Love my Lisa with all my heart. Yes, let's say happy birthday, Lee. Last year, it was kind of weird. <laughs> uh, during the lockdown, how I mean, so, so many of us had to experience birthdays just in different ways. Some of us alone and just having some online presence, either whether it was through a WhatsApp call or Zoom, whatever it is. But here we are able to celebrate uh, in person today. Also just wanna just say comfort to the various families. I'm not gonna be able to mention all the different families who've gone through some real challenges in the last week. I think of the beautiful Tons and the Full Gates and others, um, just God's grace and comfort to you uh, as you're walking through a valley right now. You know, I remember many years ago as a little guy growing up in church, I mean, that's been part of my life. Um, but I'd hear this analogy of the importance of the fireplace and how we are likened to uh, coals in a fire and how important it is for us to be close together. And uh, that the closer we are together, the more we can glow, the, we, we burn brighter, we hotter. And, uh, but the moment you pull a coal away from a fire, guess what happens, we lose the flame. And so it's so important for us to understand our frontline community, to understand 
together we grow, together we also glow. And I believe in these days, more than ever before, uh, yes, the church has gone through unprecedented challenges over the centuries. I think of the early church through a terrible opposition and persecution, but how they came through. And I believe it's because of, firstly, the Spirit of God and Jesus building His church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, but the church understanding that we need one another, that together we grow, together we glow. And uh, I think of the most amazing atmosphere for you and I to, to heal and to grow in our identity as sons and daughters of God. The worship team did a beautiful, beautiful job this morning. Freddie and Louise are enjoying a well-deserved rest right now. Um, but just understanding what it is to grow in an atmosphere of grace, an atmosphere of acceptance, to hang out in a community where we know we all works in progress, but that we deeply loved for who we are and accepted for who we are that I recognize that in order for me to grow in love for God, love for others, love for myself, and also to become all God intended for me, for you to be, it's gonna need to happen in this atmosphere of encouragement, atmosphere of grace, atmosphere of acceptance, spurring one another, strengthening one another, encouraging one another. This is the atmosphere of the church. And so the church has so many beautiful benefits, so many beautiful purposes, and we were to look at one or two this morning as we partake around the Lord's table. We're in the middle of a series called Frontline, that everyone has one. Uh, Frontline is the place where you spend the majority of your time. Uh, that can be at work, that can be at home, that can be in your neighborhood, wherever it is, spending the majority of your time. And God has called us to unite together in understanding that there is a call given by Jesus, the Lord and the lover of the church. There's a call that he asks us to fulfill. That in our everyday socializing, community involvement, working, studying, you name it, in our everyday lives that we are joining him in being real, in being real, but also representing Jesus in our everyday lives. And that together as the church, we understand that we spend about 5%, depending if we're all getting together here on Sundays and online, and then also through group ministries, and they're all kick-starting this week and equip classes. Let's say about 5%, 10% of your time is where we are the church gathered. We gather together to unite in, in worship, unite in learning from the Word and what is the Holy Spirit saying to us right now corporately, speaking to us individually, but then also speaks to us corporately as His church, where we are being equipped and encouraged and supported and strengthened and loved in our journey as followers of Jesus. And so just two big ideas. I know this is a series that we could take many weeks on just talking in and around the church. And Pastor Samuel Tabe did such a phenomenal job in just speaking in and around the purpose of the church. But another purpose is the purpose of the church is to help each other live fruitful lives on our front line. That we actually together our one big family here to support one another, encourage one another, strengthen, pray for one another so that we can be fruitful on our front line. One of my passions is creating an environment where people can experience the love and the presence of God. That it's an understanding the love and presence of God that I begin to grow and begin to heal and begin to understand all that He's created us to be. And so Jesus talks about how the Father is glorified when you and I abide in Jesus and bear much fruit. The way, we, the way we're gonna bear much fruit, and that's in terms of understanding who we are as God's people and being bearing much fruit in terms of our own um, personalities and our own characters and also our ministries, our potential, being fruitful in those areas, I believe it's so important for us to realize that God wants us to be fruitful. And uh, Galatians talks about the fruit of the Spirit, and that's one aspect of being fruitful, being kind and gentle and loving and patient and all these different areas, and we all, again, are works in progress in this. Paul the Apostle, a great leader in the body of Christ, he writes to a church in Colossae, 
and the letters called the Colossians, it's, they were called the Colossians, and here he's sharing various insights, when you've got time, you could talk, you could read a bit more around uh, what he says, but he's sharing insights in the importance of the gathered church, how important it is for the church to gather together, and how we help each other be spiritually fruitful on our front lines, because this is where you spend 95% of your life, on your front line. We gather together, let's say it's 5% of your week, but 95% of your week is out there, and God wants to help us strengthen one another so we can be fruitful on our front line. And so in Colossians 3 verse 12, this is what Paul by the Spirit says. He says, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, And holy could also be called different, separated, not self-righteous or that we're better than anyone, but that we understand that God is calling us to be his called out ones. He loves us. You must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Clothing ourselves with these things. Make allowance for each other's faults. Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts, for as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful." And so here Paul is just sharing a little bit about a healthy culture, a church that's beginning to grow in a life-giving, encouraging, humble atmosphere where everyone's beginning to clothe themselves with love and forgiveness and also beginning to experience peace. That in these days, people are longing for true peace. And I believe it's being united with Jesus and understand that we are part of the body of Christ and being together helps us experience another dimension of peace. So Paul is here speaking to this church and by the Spirit speaking to us, saying that, hey, how we are to relate to one another and how we need a healthy reliance upon one another that we can't do this thing alone. That coal that's separated is going to burn out. It's going to grow cold. And in these days, the enemy wants to wear out the saints, and he knows if he can isolate us, disconnect us from being one family and strengthening one another, well, he works in his game plan. God knows that we are powerful together. Together we grow and glow. Now, we know this. In your front line, Some of the things that Paul has just spoken about, about humility and patience and kindness and mercy and forgiveness and love, um, your lifeline or your front line rather may not have all those things. I don't think you wake up on a Monday driving to work or going to Zoom to work, however it's gonna be, and you think, wait, I can't wait to get to work so I can experience some tender-hearted mercy from my boss or from my colleagues or from my customers. I can't wait to get to to work so I can experience some humility and some patience and gentleness. It doesn't always happen though. If it does, well then you're super, super blessed. Uh, But what do we do if we go to places, our front line doesn't necessarily make allowances for some of our faults and when we mess up, and so there's not that forgiveness that Paul the Apostle is speaking about. What happens if your boss or uh, your neighbor or the person you're studying with uh, doesn't necessarily show love towards you or patience towards you? What happens if you are, instead of experiencing peace on your front line, you're experiencing harshness and cruelty and judgment and small-mindedness? What do we do with that? That in every day we're going out, and yes, sometimes it's a battle. We're experiencing some battles and blessings, but in the midst of it, what, what do we do when we're experiencing those different um, uh, exper- those battles? I believe this is where we as the church need to understand we need a place to refuel, refuel. We need a place to go where our spiritual, relational, and emotional tanks are filled. And I believe that's the church, that's the place where we experience the corporate anointing of God, whether it's in small groups or in big gatherings like this, that it's so important for us to fill up, 
by this corporate anointing, by being involved in the church of Jesus Christ. It's where that I believe we are empowered and enthused in order to be real, in, to have that real impact uh, where God has placed us. Where sometimes we're losing perspective with the temptations and how the Bible says the fiery darts of the evil one. And sometimes there's some arrows that are getting the better of us. But it's in, I believe, the body of Christ that we have this extra protection and the strength. It doesn't mean we're not gonna go through some challenges, but it's a beautiful place for us to prepare our perspective and refill our spiritual cups. We were reminded of our identity. We were reminded of who we can become. We were reminded, listen, don't be weary in well-doing for you shall reap if you faint not. We were reminded that we are here on a mission sent by God Almighty to make a difference in this world, that you are of immense value to God, that we are called to be more Christ-like in terms of understanding who we are as the people of God, where the enemy will try and accuse. I love that one song that we sang together, how the accuser comes, but how he scatters the the accusations of the enemy, that you've got a defender, that you've got someone who wants to show himself strong on your behalf. But it's as we come together as the church and unite together that God's truth helps us in our identities, helps us grow, that we come as we are, but we don't stay as we are. We are in this process of growth and also understanding that we have a ministry and that there are moments that when we get together, that we understand, hey, listen, it's not always easy on the front line. There's moments that we, there's, we need perspective to help us, hey, that we can move forward in these areas. I remember some time ago, there was this article in the San Francisco newspaper, Chronicle, and it was all about this dear lady called Linda. And Linda, she was a, br- a bus driver, but she loved her passengers. She, she showed incredible love to everyone who would come on, on the bus. And she began to learn people's names and she would even wait for some of the passengers when they were late, but she would try and make up the time later. And every time she would get to the end of her line, well, the passenger at the end of her line, she would simply say this, that's all, I love you, take care. Imagine you had a bus driver every day, that's all, love you, take care. And her impact just grew, her influence. It became such a community of blessing just on her front line in her bus. And there was this woman in the 80s named um, Ivy and she had a heavy grocery uh, bag and would ha- she was struggling and here Linda gets out of the bus, actually helps on the bus. And so impacted this dear lady in her 80s that uh, it was Ivy that would let other buses pass just so she could get onto Linda's frontline bus. Also, Linda saw a woman named Tanya in a bus shelter and uh, it was around Thanksgiving and she could see that she was disoriented and was new to the area, it was Thanksgiving. Guess what she does? She actually reaches out to her and just begins to be an ambassador of love and light to this dear lady, Tanya, and said, hey, listen, why don't you come join us for Thanksgiving? It's just the kids and I. And yeah, developed a beautiful relationship. And just over time, how this dear lady called Linda became, it became a community of blessings. She was a blessing to so many others around her. And I want you to think of being a bus driver. Here, yeah, engine breakdowns, traffic, hooting, cranky passengers, you name it. Everyone has their unique challenges. But yeah, there was something about Linda that she always kept the right attitude. I'm sure she had some down days, some scratchy days, but generally just showed love to her front line. And she was once asked, how do you keep your attitude so right? And one of the things she said, she says, you know what, I normally set my mood, my day at around 2.30 in the morning. And she says, I go before the Lord in prayer. And she says, there's so much to talk to the Lord about in prayer. After a while, Linda's story just grew in the community and uh, there was a church that invited to just share just some of her testimony and just some of her stories. But it was at the end of her story that a dear man came up to her weeping. And he just said, he said, hey Linda, he says, Linda, I need prayer. He says, tomorrow's Monday, the 23rd of September. And she said, he said, I lost my son a year ago. It's his first year anniversary, the death of my son. And yeah, Linda, her eyes, she was filled with tears as well. And she said, you know, interestingly, she says, tomorrow, Monday, the 23rd of September is also the death of my son who I lost a few years ago. 
And she began to just share her heart with them and said, you know, God's brought you to this church for healing, to help heal your pain. And in this moment, there was prayer, and it was a spiritual electric moment for them. Everyone was witnessing this special dear moment as Linda ministering to a man in dear pain. And she asked him, she says, now, do you understand that this is the beginning of your journey? You coming here today is the beginning of your journey and that you need to be part of a church. And she said, are you part of a church? And he said, no. And she, he said, do you realize it's important? He says, well, I suppose it's an important thing. And she says, it's so important. It's a key thing for your healing. And yeah, she introduced him to the pastor and the journey began for this dear man. There was something that Linda knew, and I think we all know this, but just once again, just looking at the truth of our human nature, the truth of community and the truth of God's word, that you don't wanna be out there these days without support and encouragement of a good church community. That there's no ways that you're not gonna really be blessed and fruitful on our front line if we're gonna try and do this thing alone. It just makes it so much harder. We need the strength and how one puts 1,000 to flight to 10,000. And so there's something about Linda, she knew that she couldn't be the true blessing to the community that she was if it wasn't for her own local church community, a place where she was part of and a place where she knew people she could love and care, people that were filling her and strengthening her, empowering her, that she was part of a, a church community and that in, by doing that, she was being blessed so that she could be a blessing to others. And so I believe it applies to all of us that we gather together, that the purpose of the church, part of the purpose of the church is to help each other be fruitful on the front line. And the second thing is also that the church frees Christ followers, Christ followers to be effective on their front line. That listen, we all come with different baggage, all of us with some issues and some form of brokenness. That we all are being, our minds are being renewed and there's areas of brokenness and some baggage and some thoughts that need to be changed by the truth of God. And there's something about being in a healing community that the body begins to heal, that you begin to heal. When you break your arm, you don't try and throw your arm away, you keep the arm close. And I believe it's something that liberates us when we are part of the body of Christ. There's a part of wholeness, a part of healing, a part of freedom that actually comes to each one of us when we're hanging out together. When Paul speaks to the church in Colossae, he, he's talking about putting on tender-hearted mercy and kindness and patience and gentleness and forgiveness and love and peace and all these things, that these are kingdom values, kingdom culture, and sometimes it's not easy to try and get that whole humility thing or that gentle thing or that patient thing or that forgiveness thing because our flesh wants to be rebellious or independent of God. There's a way we've worked and operated, but God's saying, listen, these things need to become part of who you are, and the way that this is gonna happen is by you being united together and growing together, that together we grow. And so I believe that it's through the scriptures, and here Paul begins to share some of the keys, and this is what happens in gatherings. This is what he says when he's talking about how we're gonna grow and becoming merciful and gentle and patient. Obviously, your own relationship with the Lord, but that we need one another. The Spirit is gonna work in you. We prayed, sang that beautiful song, come Holy Spirit, pour your Spirit out. Holy Spirit is transforming us, working us, but guess how he begins to work in us and heal us? It's through people. He works through people. We serve a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, modeling perfect, harmonious, unifying relationship. And so it's relationship, and yes, we all have got some issues, and yes, we can all be a bit prickly sometimes, but it's being ha hanging out together, that's where healing begins to take place, as we're uni unifying and uniting around Jesus, glorifying Jesus in His Word. But look what Paul says. He says, listen, guys, the way we're gonna grow in mercy, the way we're gonna grow in patience and gentleness and forgiveness, he says this in verse 16, let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Let it fill your lives. Let us be centered around the word of God, the thing that brings us healing and freedom. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. This is what happens when we're praying and encouraging, sharing the word like this in groups, etc. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. 
And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus giving thanks through him to God the Father. And what I love about what he's saying is let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. I think so often we're so focusing on so many other opinions out there and not really listening to the words of Jesus that bring comfort, that bring healing, that bring direction, that bring faith. And so here, Paul's saying, listen, the way we're gonna grow is as we let the message of Christ fuel our thoughts, begin to fuel our discernment, begin to stir compassion, to begin to give us perspective. And it's in moments like this that the Holy Spirit is taking this whole experience together as a church, even as we meet together before and after services and during the week, etc. the Lord, as we keep in the Word of God alive, what it's doing is it's beginning to fill our hearts, beginning to affect our thinking and our behavior. Also, that there's this whole idea of worship that I believe worship is so critical in in our transformation. The Bible talks as we behold Him, so we are changed from glory to glory, that it's the Word of God, it's worship. As we begin to worship, worship is a key value here for us as New Life Church. Also the preaching of God's Word. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? Hear what the Spirit is saying to you. In any any discussion, in any gathering together, the Holy Spirit's gonna be saying something, something through the message, through the worship, through the prayers that he's speaking. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? And I believe in you getting dry or feeling weak, this is what's so beautiful about us gathering together, but then also individually, that we're surrounding ourselves around the Word, that we're worshiping together. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Sometimes it's just gonna be a song that's gonna come out of your spirit and you just begin singing that, spirit, singing that song. That's also filling you. That's how you're gonna be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I believe it's out of that that God begins to help us be effective also in whatever we do. Whatever we do, we can be representatives of Jesus. And so I believe the church needs, helps us be effective on our front line. That as we beginning to allow the word, worship and ministry, what happens, um, we get stirred up and encouraged. And this is a beautiful scripture that I wanna land in on right now, and that is Hebrews 10 verse 25. It says, let us not neglect, let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. The one day Jesus is coming back and we're gonna think, wow, Thank goodness I hung in there. Jesus, I thank you for your strength, the strength of your church. I thank you for the power of the Spirit. And here the Scripture is encouraging us, don't give up on meeting together. And this is not a pastor coming from a point of desperation saying, hey guys, guys, I'm I'm scared. No, no, this is, I believe the Spirit of God speaking to you and I. I need the church just like you need the church. If I wasn't a pastor, I'd still need the church like you need the church. We need the church of Jesus Christ and Jesus is building his church across the globe. Amazing things are happening within this church and churches across the world. And the quicker we can understand that I cannot afford to neglect meeting together. I cannot afford to give up meeting together. This is one of the God's great ways in order for us to become more like Jesus in our identity, our character, and our ministry, and also for us to be filled and encouraged. I believe encouragement is so important. We spoke about or sang about just now, let sons and daughters prophesy and sing. Let's prophesy, let's encourage one another that you've got something in you that we need Each one of us have different gifts and personalities and strengths, and there's a word in you that when you just hang out with someone, become that listening ear, I tell you what, the Lord can do phenomenal things in and through you, in your front line, and as we gather together. I'm gonna ask Annalise if she could please come forward just as we get ready to partake. And so what I wanna encourage you to do is just, just bow your heads just for a few moments. And I'm gonna ask this for the Lord just to minister to you, peace. Listen to what the scripture says as our heads are bowed. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. My prayer right now is that as we are gathered together, whether you're online or here in Bryanston, that peace would visit your heart. 
we know that Jesus is our peace. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. That we have peace with God because of what Jesus has done in and through the cross, forgiving us of our sin and making us right with God. That we have peace. But we also have the peace of God. Lord, I pray that you would just give us a deeper revelation of how important we are to you, important we are to the church of Jesus Christ, that we are part of the body of Christ, that we are not isolated members of the body, but Lord, we pull together. We understand the importance of meeting together to encourage one another, that Jesus, one day you're coming back. Lord, you're calling us to bring your kingdom into our front line, your kingdom of beauty, your kingdom of peace, your kingdom of justice, of love, of humility, of gentleness. Lord, I pray that you would help us understand what it is to be clothed with love. Lord, to walk into different atmospheres, different front lines. And Lord, even at times where it might be harsh and hard, Lord, that we'd understand that we're part of a great body, the body of Christ that is growing and that you are building to represent your love, your peace. I pray, Lord, right now that we'll just experience, Lord, just a dimension of your peace right now. As we are united together, that Jesus, your word says, where two or three are gathered in your name, here you are in the midst. Lord, there's something about your manifested presence when people together, gather together to glorify you, Jesus, and your word. Lord, our hearts are filled with gratitude, Lord, as we just recognize your beautiful name, and Lord, that as we prepare our hearts to partake of something you asked us to do 2,000 years ago, to remember the price you paid for our sin. Lord, the path that you laid for us to follow Lord, an example, Lord, all of us fall short in so many different ways, but Jesus, you show us in order for us to walk that path of being an influence in the world is gonna come by receiving the power of the Spirit. And so Holy Spirit, I pray that you'd fill us. Lord, we've allowed your word to speak to us. We've worshiped together and we're about to worship again. And Lord, in this, this is the way we're filled to be effective on our front line in our homes, in our workplaces, our study places, our neighborhoods, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. You should have the communion elements. We're gonna partake together directly after the song. And so let's just worship together as the worship team lead us in this.
our heads just for a few more moments Jesus the name above every name that's not just some trite statement or cliche it is the truth the name above every name the only one who's been able to overcome sin Satan and the grave the only one that can say to you I've come to give you life in its fullness life in its fullness So Jesus, right now, we thank you that we can come together as your family, your eternal family. Lord, to center our lives, our hearts, our minds, our priorities in and around you, to seek you first in your rule, your kingdom. Jesus, we thank you for paying the price for every single one of us, to forgive us of our sin. Lord, to remove the stain of sin, to remove the shame of sin. Jesus, to come and reconcile us and heal us and bring life into our spirits so that we can know that we can live forever, partakers of your eternal life. So Jesus, we think of your words that you give to your church. Lord, to do this, to take the bread, to think of what you have done for us, for our forgiveness, for our future, for the purpose, for each one of us individually and corporately. Our hearts are filled with gratitude. Our hearts are filled with praise. We love you, Jesus. Let's partake together with the bread.
partaking of the bread, just to understand right now that you're part of the church of Jesus. That you're part of the body of Christ. Jesus is the head of the body. Jesus is the head of the church. It's where we find our life, our nourishment, our strength from Him and being united with the church. The cup of the new covenant, the blood that washes and cleanses us of all unrighteousness and the blood that makes us registered in the Lamb's book of life for all eternity. Let's partake. We praise you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Pray, Lord, that you would just seal this moment. Lord, we understand the importance of your beautiful church. Lord, church, that's here, the vehicle by which you're establishing your kingdom on earth of righteousness, peace, and joy. I pray, Lord, you strengthen your church. Fill them up, Lord, with your love, your peace, your power. Lord, as we go into our front line, Lord, we know that we are called and anointed by you to be fruitful wherever you've placed us in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Love you all, new life. God bless you, everyone online. God bless you here. Prayer teams are available in the overflow rooms in the front here, anybody that needs prayer. And don't forget, you can sign up for groups and classes all happening this week to strengthen you and encourage you. Have a beautiful week. God bless you all.